So uh, our next talk is uh, by Alexei Kovalev. Are you here? Um, yes, I'm here. Do okay, you well, Please go. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for introduction. Uh, I'm glad to be here to present our work on vector symmetric model for visual question answering. And I'd like to start with the formulation of the visual question asking task, uh, which actually is very simple. Uh, that given an input image and a question in natural language about this image, the AI system should predict an answer uh, to this question. Uh, there's several uh, common data sets for this task, such as uh, VKA on the left, which consists mostly of the uh, real life images, uh, but they're cartoons as well. And uh, questions, um, most about common sense knowledge, uh, but there are also about some specific properties of objects on the image. Uh, on the right uh, part of the slide, there is a clever data set, um, also a very well known data set in the UK community. Uh, that is a synthetic data set, so images uh, are 3 ranging. And uh, questions um, use templates uh, to produce them. Uh, uh, despite this limitation that there are no more than 10 uh, objects on the set and objects have a limited number of properties, uh, the questions are very complex and it, uh, it, it takes the time to answer them. Actually, uh, all current systems, almost all current systems, uh, first of all, uh, use classification formulation for this task, so we don't generate uh, an answer for the question, but choose uh, one of the predefined uh, categories. And another, they use mostly uh, neural networks approach to this task. So there are several examples, uh, starting from the uh, very simple one, uh, the uh, image encoded into uh, feature vector combined by concatenation uh, with uh, word features, and then uh, passed to uh, multi-layer perceptron for prediction. Also, there are uh, models that use attentions and um, a recurrent neural network to encode um, question um, into embedding. And in recent uh, re re uh, years, the branch of uh, works that deal with a transformer architecture uh, and use some kind of uh, pre-trained BERT models uh, for this visual and linguistic task, not just for VQA, but for others as well. But the problem that we uh, face with um, this task is a single grounding. So, uh, how we connect uh, the meanings in, in our system uh, with real data, uh, with objects in real life. And uh, we try to solve this problem by combining two approaches, first from a symmetric approach, and uh, we enrich it with uh, vector symbolic architecture. But we start with uh, symmetric approach. It has psychological grounds in what this these uh, three uh, solid psychologists. And, um, the difference between uh, semiotic and symbolic approach are listed here. I'm not going to uh, discuss all of them, but just want to point out uh, two. So first of all, the structuring. So uh, the information unit that we are going to use uh, should have its internal structure, first of all, and then uh, connectivity that uh, this information units uh, should be somehow connected or combined into a network. And now we discuss this information unit. Uh, we use the code sign. It consists of four elements, uh, significance uh, that um, encodes uh, knowledge that distributed among all agents and uh, available to all agents. Uh, meaning uh, that is for one concrete uh, agent and it's actually a kind of experience of this agent. Uh, image which we, which we could use for distinguish one entity from another entity and also name this um, could be viewed as a symbol in its classical uh, meaning. And also these signs are connected into a network, what we call symbiotic network. And uh, every um, structure, every component of the structure is encoded by a special um, structure we call causal matrix. This could be in simplest form um, binary matrix where we have, we have just zeros and ones. And each column is um, understand as an event or if you, we want to encode a dynamic entity, it, it could be seen as a discrete time. And also each uh, row uh, is, uh, is appearance of a particular feature at this exactly uh, time event or this exactly event. 
And uh, if you get Y here, this means that there is a link from this causal matrix to causal matrix of another sign. Also, we could split, uh, split these um, columns into two parts, like split these indices into two disjoint subsets, uh, causes and effects. And if you have this, if both of the subsets are not empty, then they say it's our matrix and codes a procedure or action. But if um, an effect subset is empty, then they say that uh, this matrix is encodes just objects. And here is an example how can encode um, an object, in this case it's a head, uh, in terms of causal matrices. So uh, head, we could uh, detect some particular um, features uh, of this head. Here's like left eye, right eye, nose, mouth, and we detect them in the one particular order, and then we get uh, this causal matrix. But also we could detect uh, these features in other particular in other order, and then we get this another matrix. But uh, actually they describe the same object. And this leads us to uh, the meaning of causal tensor. Then on the this axis we have uh, time events, not just events. Uh, on the rows we have um, features. I think of one particular feature at this particular event. But on the third uh, third dimension we have this number of precedents. And in the worst case, the n factorial precedents give the n features uh, for this particular object. It's of course uh, undesirable behavior because uh, then we face this uh, combinatorial exposure and we don't want to lose it. Uh, also, this, uh, as I said, uh, these causal matrices are combined into a network. And here an example, so starting from the picture or from the uh, sensor signals, uh, we use feature structure to get the definition of this, um, like, uh, of this particular objects. Then we use it to um, encode images of this particular science and combine this uh, causal matrices together to produce uh, causal matrix for head and then for body parts. Yeah, and uh, here's some formal definition of, of a sign. I'm not going to stay here for a long time, but uh, I will be able to answer questions to that. And another approach would be used uh, is a vector symbolic architectures. Uh, these frameworks, uh, like by nature, uh, tries to combine some symbolic and uh, symbolic computation because it works with symbols, uh, but it represents symbols as numerical vectors. And also it defines uh, vector operations for these symbols, such as uh, set operation or this element-wise sum. Um, element-wise multiplication uh, could be considered as applying, um, as, uh, ap applying an attribute and its uh, value to this attribute. And also can include, uh, include something like ordering and could measure the similarity between these two vectors. The nature of uh, vectors we use in uh, VSA could be different. It could be uh, binary vectors or uh, bipolar vectors, complex and real numbers, it doesn't matter. Uh, the only matter is the uh, number of dimensions. So the higher, the better. And it works like that, that uh, to encode the symbol into high dimensional vector, uh, what we have to do is just uh, randomly sample the vector space and say that uh, this random vector corresponds to this particular symbol. And uh, why it works? Uh, because if we increase the number of dimensions uh, for our vector, uh, then um, almost all of the vectors become uh, quasi orthogonal to each other. So if you talk about similarity, the similarity very close to, uh, to zero in terms of um, cosine similarity, or uh, close to uh, 0 0.5 in terms of normal having distance, normalized having distance. And now we use these two approaches together to encode the sign depicted on the picture. Uh, first of all, uh, we use a semantic network to represent the sign uh, as a collection of objects with attributes and values of these attributes. And then we use um, VSA to encode the whole, the whole this graph into one vector of uh, side dimensions. How do we do it? So here the uh, standard presentation. Uh, so send is a collection of objects, as I say, each object has its particular um, set of attributes, and its attributes set um, has its uh, has the meanings. And to represent one causal matrix as a high-dimensional vector, we first split uh, of this matrix into events, and then for each event we generate a vector and uh, sum them up. 
So if we work with objects, we don't uh, worry about ordering for these um, events. So we can uh, use set representation in this case. Also, to represent the link from matrix Z1 to Z2, we first have to represent Z2 as a um, high dimension vector, as represented in the previous slide. Then for Z1, uh, we split it into, again, uh, different events. And for each event, we generate new random vectors and element wise, the multiply corresponding uh, event uh, with the presentation of matrix Z2. When if there are several links uh, to matrices Z, Y, Z, K, and so on, uh, we do the same and then sum them up. So now we get the uh, whole representation uh, of, uh, of this graph in terms of uh, high dimensional vectors. But to apply to uh, uh, visual question answering, uh, we start from the baseline uh, introduced by uh, Joshua Donenbaum at MIT. And they have this very nice paper on neural symbolic uh, visual question answering. And uh, what they uh, did, they uh, processed uh, images and questions separately, extracted objects uh, from, uh, from image, uh, then using like attribute network extracted their properties and encode the whole set into a table, <coughs> um, such as like, data frames from your expanders. Uh, and then they encode every questions into a program. So this program is a set of uh, deterministic procedures. And then it's kind of like filtering of the, um, this table, this procedure means. And then they apply this uh, program to table presentation to produce an answer. In our work, uh, we use, first of all, semantic representation to encode the scent into a graph structure, uh, into the into causal network, and then we use uh, vector symbolic architectures to come uh, to represent this uh, graph, the structure, uh, as one vector that's called seen here uh, of high dimensionality, and then again we use uh, another procedures in our program, and we also encode questions uh, into programs. And then we execute these problems on this standard presentation. Uh, here's an example of standard presentation. So actually, every element here is a high dimensional vector. Um, and this particular part means that um, a yellow cylinder has attribute color, and also it has a particular attribute, um, sorry, what is, uh, a particular color yellow. Yes, and then uh, giving, having this matrix, uh, having this vector, uh, we could uh, do some several operations with it. And here's a kind of procedure that gets objects uh, with particular value. So uh, in child procedure works with a very simple element-wise operations as uh, multiplication and summation and uh, similarity measurement into objects. And this allows us to, to produce answer to our question, to the question given to this image. And uh, also, uh, um, our results are present here. Uh, it's very close to results of uh, NSVK, that is state of the art for the data set. But it's a little bit worse uh, than NSVK because we use uh, random uh, encoding and uh, due to the structure, um, results, it's uh, more moderate. But uh, what we get at the end, uh, we have this uh, sem semantic embedding as one whole vector, not just a table, which is very difficult to work with uh, for other application, but uh, this um, high dimensional vector uh, could be used as additional um, embedding uh, of this image, of this template. And in conclusion, I just want to point out that what we have now is a working pipeline for BQA task. And uh, by this pipeline, I try to bring it together between symbolic and sub-symbolic reasoning by combining uh, vector symbolic architecture, semantic approach, and neural networks as feature extractors. Also, our results comparable to SOTA and the great potential to extend this approach to other tasks such as uh, visual dialogue, visual common sense reasoning uh, for navigation and local closure in navigation. Uh, and there are other challenges because um, now we work with synthetic data set Clever, but uh, what if we change for VQA and there's a problem how to 
um, encode this sense into a high dimensional vector? And what are there more objects than 10 on this 10? And uh, what are there more features than 10 uh, in, in, in Clever for a particular scene? So this is, um, is, is, is a theme for our future world. And that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? I would expect questions from Heda, I guess. No? Yeah, I I guess I already asked my uh, my questions. <laughs> how how did you do that? Um, I, I I read his uh, his earlier uh, in chat paper. Oh, I see. He sent me his paper. I see. Earlier. <laughs> no, you, you but but how is it how is it um, how is it going uh, with the uh, with the symbolic part? Maybe I can ask that. Okay. That um, uh, well, uh, had seen my previous presentation, and there was like preliminary results. It's uh, not so good as now. And so we uh, uh, increase our results as you see in this slide. So it's now comparable to um, an SVK. And well, for symbol parts work, uh, worked quite well because uh, now we also have results for visual dialogue and uh, another tax for navigation. There we collected data set uh, for like, um, an agent navigating through environment. Uh, from habitat data set and then uh, we again use this presentation to ask questions about relations to object on, on the data set so it's working it's still in progress but we have another results as well yeah thank you antonio yeah probably a, a curiosity so uh, thank you for the presentation great talk and so in in this table of results you are comparing your system with uh, this uh, mm -hmm. ns uh, mm -hmm. um, one which is uh, i guess the state of the art for the um, visual question answering right so see, my question is since you are kind of combining uh, different modalities right so the, the visual one and the the, the language one uh, what happens if you dissect, uh, let's say, your vector symbolic uh, architecture? Because there are other benchmarks and, and other system if you go into the NLP community or if you go in the computer vision community. Like, uh, I don't know, if for the same kind of queries, you, you compare your, let's say, language component with the, the state-of-the-art uh, uh, models of the language component, like, I don't know, BERT, uh, BERT now is not uh, or not even uh, the, the state of the art. There are others. Uh, this, but, so the idea is this one. What happens if you want to understand a little bit, uh, 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 let's say, what are the, 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 um, the real the, um, the components that allows you to, uh, to, to better achieve these performances uh, uh, if compared with, uh, with the, the state of the art of a very dish uh, subfield, let's say. So, uh, NLP, and uh, I don't know if, you, if this is something that uh, uh, you were uh, thinking to do or it is not interesting to you. Just a mm -hmm. comment on that. Okay, thank you for a good question. Um, actually, I showed on the second slide or third, uh, okay, I turned it, uh, the current architectures for uh, VK, and they use this bird part, yeah, and they actually like uh, retrain. Um, it's together with visual and linguistic features and get the state of the art of the current uh, on the current data sets. And uh, these particular results are shown for clever data set, which is quite simple and simpler than you can see here is example of the picture. Uh, it's uh, quite simpler than uh, UK and actually there is no comparison with, uh, of these approaches, like better approaches or uh, neural networks for this because it's very simple. But um, Actually, uh, this was a test bed with data set. Now we try to um, first 
applied to more uh, more sophisticated data sets as we create. And second, uh, what in the nature of our approach is explainability. So our um, like we have a very structural standard presentation, and uh, the program we use to find an answer uh, again they can be talked in how we find it. So we are not just like uh, feeding uh, features into network and producing an answer, uh, but uh, all these all these programs are here, and the journal structure of pro programs are also known, and the whole presentation center is known. Uh, so I wouldn't say uh, this like um, uh, will beat the uh, now the state of the art produced by neural networks approach, but it's just. Uh, an another attempt to uh, do more like interpretable reasoning and interpretable um, like question answering in case you're doing question answering. So I think it's important. I hope I answered your question. Yes, thank, thank you. We are short on time and uh, need to move forward. Thank you very much for your talk. Thank you. Um, our